she's laughing in the background that I'm singing. So <laughs> Dr. Rachel Bittacoffer, my friend, I am so happy to have you back here. Happy birthday is a particularly challenging song for me. It's in between keys and I have a Janis Joplin type, like rough yeah. voice, you know? <laughs> uh-huh. I, you know, I do karaoke every single week and, um, Oh my gosh, it. I'd <laughs> love to do karaoke with you, yeah. Tony. We would have so you, much you fun. Should come the last out. time I karaoke, I did a, a duet of Billy Joel's The Longest Time and it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. I took the lead and my friend Tiff did the harmony and it was nice. Oh my God. Did the crowd go wild? Did the crowd? They had. They did. Crowd. All ten of them. Yeah. Well, so so we actually on my Patreon we do karaoke nights, and December seventeenth we're gonna do Christmas karaoke. So you're welcome to come on December seventeenth if you want, and you can listen. And hell, if you want to sing with me, I'll pull you up, and we can we can sing a song together if you want. On December seventeenth, karaoke. Huh? Christmas my favorite karaoke. Christmas song. Tony shouldn't surprise mm-hmm. you at all. Like I'm sold, Which but only if it's my favorite song. And that is Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer. Okay. <laughs> Grandma Got Ran Over yeah. by a Reindeer. Walking home from our house so Christmas great. Eve. That's 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 a good Christmas song. I'm not yeah. going to lie. One of my you favorite say ones. there's no such thing as Santa. But yeah. me and Tony, we believe. <laughs> we believe. I believe in Santa. Of we believe. I believe <laughs> <laughs> and I believe that you are here. To tell us about all kinds of wild stuff that um, the folks' families may believe at Thanksgiving and how to pivot and attack. Now, you have had this pivot and attack guide out for quite some time. So I want you to tell us about the pivot and attack guide. But I saw that you had the pivot and attack guide for Thanksgiving uh, on your sub stack. And I was like, oh, my God, this is such a great idea. I need to have her on and we need to just hear this out loud, um, how Rachel would tell us to pivot and attack on our, our fascist family that we're going to encounter on, on Thanksgiving. Uh, unfortunately in this country, we're going to go through that. Um, so first tell everyone about the pivot and attack guide and tell us about pivot and attack in general, because not just at the Thanksgiving table, we as, we as pr- the pro democracy coalition coalition need to get better and better and better at this. And the better we get at it, the easier it's going to be. So tell us about pivot and attack and what it means and how that works. Well, Tony, since we don't do it at all, mm-hmm. we have lots of room to improve, right? Well, so the bar is pretty good low. <laughs> I guess that's good right? I guess like, that's good when news. I started seeing politicians on Meet the Press, like stop having like our side, right? Because Chris Christie's on there all the, or he's on the other one, the, whatever, the CBS version, Face the Nation. You know, they, every time he, that man is on TV, he pivots and attacks. Whatever they ask him about, it's change the topic to something that is, bad for Democrats, right? So you, you make the top, you know, if someone says Democrats want to defund the police or, or, or um, uh, Christie, Christie says, you know, uh, or, or whatever, whatever. Right. So like the Christie starts off and he, and, and there he's asked a question about gun violence or whatever tax kit or Trump or something. And instead of answering that question, what does he do? He says, well, I would tell you, I mean, I think it's important that instead we talk about, right? And he doesn't actually ever answer that question. What we do is like, they go and then we're like, oh yeah, you know, CRT, you know, this is really a stupid debate. Let me tell you why. There's no such thing as CRT. It's a legal theory that maybe you'd see in like, you know, one of these in, you know, Hamas indoctrination camp law programs, right? <laughs> like whatever right like we would say that and we would explain and we'd spend the whole 10 minutes or five minute media keep in mind there's very few opportunities for politicians to get an audience the size of meet the press or face the nation those are the biggest like you know news programs on there's a lot of people who watch no news all week and then watch that so it, you know we we spend that five ten minutes trying to explain to people the truth about crt and what we should have been doing is pivot and attack and be like oh You want to protect kids. Like anytime a Republican says the word protect kids to you, you should start drooling like the big bad wolf, like huffing and puffing at the house because Republicans for years are sentencing our children to getting slaughtered, to blown to bits, okay? Like in schools, like if you want to protect kids, Uncle Bob, why is it that you stand in the way of protecting them from getting slaughtered at school with a weapon of war? Right. And then suddenly Uncle Bob's been called a kitty killer. 
right now. It, and then you could even do what they would do. They would, they'd, they'd, they'd close that line out with, why do you want kids to die? Right. Cause that's what they do to us. Right. Why do you want people to be, um, un, you know, to get, to be at the mercy of criminals? Right? Like it's not a, it's not a, it's, it's disingenuous. Right. But it's designed to make us defend ourselves. Well, I didn't say that. I don't say, I, I'm not saying I want kids to die. Right. And so what you can do is you have to, you have to, whatever they're throwing at you, be it defund the police, the small stuff, you know, whatever, right? You have to resist, the, the hardest part of pivot of attack is resisting that first bait to get into a substantive conversation, defending the Democrats on whatever Bob has decided to lob at you. Resisting that instinct is, the, in my opinion, the most important part of this training, because it is so hard for us to pass up an opportunity to have a debate, because we believe, and I've watched Democratic Party, I mean, the, the DNC has gotten so much better, but in the old days, they used to put out, I shit you not, I found a guide online from the DNC, how to talk to your MAGA uncle over Thanksgiving, and guess what it advised? Stay calm, present your facts. <laughs> I'm like, listen, dude, and, and listen, in this audience, I'm going to assume that we've got some pro-America people in this fucking audience. So, like, imagine, you know, if, if you will, like, the, this idea that you should keep calm and, and rebut with facts, given what some of us have spent the last month doing in terms of facts about the context of the Israeli-Palestinian fight, you know, the, the the history of that ancestral land, which dates back to biblical times, which predates both Christianity and, and Islam, because Judaism is, of course, the first religion that branches out of those. Like we could do that. We can tell them all of that and it's not working, right? So now I think people kind of have a better sense of why it's so hard to fix a MAGA with reality and facts. And that, it, you know, instead what you should be doing is pivoting, attacking, putting them on the defense, making them feel the heat for their positions and not ruining your own appetite in the process. You know, I think who is you one of the best at pivot and attack? Who? Um, Hakeem Jeffries is one of the best at pivot and attack, and he does it so well in a press conference. And it's one of the best examples of a modern politician who is a Democrat, who is in leadership, who is so good at pivot and attack, because every time he's asked a question, he pivots and attacks, just like you said, Chris Christie does. And he puts he puts manga on their heels. And the way that I describe it, instead of pivot and attack, maybe a different way for the audience to look at it, maybe is you have to get this person to defend their positions, right? You have to make them defend their positions to you because you'll defend your positions, right? But you have to make them defend your positions. You can't be on offense or you have to be on offense. They can't be on offense the entire time. You have to make them defend it. So what are some of those key questions when they start doing the garbly gook, whether it be about Trump's cases or the, the Israeli conflict or what, whatever, uh, this, this, the wiener of the house, Micro Johnson, as we call him here on this show, whatever the case may be um, that, that is happening or the arguments that they're, the Fox News arguments that they're going to make, what are some of those questions that you use specifically to put them on that defense and make them defend their position. Okay. Yeah. So to, to build your own like arsenal and be prepared for these moments that pop up organically. Right. right? Especially for a lot of folks listening to this show, right? They're, they're, you're going to, it's going to come up in conversations from their social media, stuff like that. Right. So what I would say is like, okay, you, everyone on listening to this program probably can list five things that are very fucking bad about the modern Republican party. They tried to overthrow the government. They've stolen women's bodily autonomy, right? <laughs> like you can go on and on, right? Uh, they won't let us do anything about guns and we're literally dropping like flies. Like, I'm, I mean, you know, I don't think there's a person that doesn't think every day when they send their kid off to school, God, I hope not. Right. Um, you know, so, so, and that's just the beginning, right? I mean, that's just like the, the high, they want to come for social security. They want to come for Medicare. They, um, you know, want to abandon Ukraine and let 
Putin put a flag, a Russian flag over Kiev, right? There's so many things. And everybody has their own pet things, the things that they like the best, right? So maybe it's they 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 are the reason the world's on fire is because Republicans created the climate change hoax. We've not ever been able to enact any real meaningful climate change legislation, not just here, but broadly, globally, because of the global hoax thing or the hoax thing that Republicans invented. So whatever your issue is, there's a weakness there, right? And you just have to have that prepared. It's like, okay, Uncle Bob wants to talk about defunding the police. Nope, I want to talk about kids dying at school, okay? Uncle Bob wants to talk about you know, um, whatever, vote, vote, you know, stolen elections. I want to attack Uncle Bob for the, the oath, for the oath to uphold and defend the Constitution, right? And how can you say you uphold the Constitution when you're violating one of the most important, you know, components of it, the transfer of power, right? You have to be prepped with your counter attacks in your mind. I think that would be a pretty important part. And I think like anybody that's following their following politics on the daily probably has a pretty good reservoir of that stuff. And I, I wait for code words. Like I let the person lead me into like, you know, with whatever they're going to debate me with or bait me with, whether it's race in schools, which I'm going to pivot to keeping kids alive in schools or, you know, um, economic stuff, whatever it is, I have something that like, it's a key word that goes off in my brain. And I'm like, Oh, you want to talk about a, well, let's talk about B that connects to A, but it will never address A because I'm not going to sit here and spend 15 minutes explaining to you, you know, why the facts are this and that. Instead, I'm going to use this five minutes as performative art. OK, it's performative art. It's not designed to win the debate. It's designed to win the optics of the debate. And that's exactly. where Republicans are really, really good. Yeah. Well, here's here's an image of uh, the Thanksgiving pivot and attack arena here. Um, you know, we we have leaned into the <laughs> AI thing. Uh, we go we go full AI as soon as we have an idea. Uh, we can we can pop that thing out. Let me show you this here um, of you not taking. Yeah, let bait. me see. I'm... You don't you don't want to take bait at, no, the, uh, thanks, at the Thanksgiving um, dinner table. You don't want to take the, the bait from your farm fresh fash. Facebook Uncle Fred, as we call him here. I know it's a long way to saying that. But here's the other thing that I think is a good pivot and attack. And really, I think it's one of the best pivot and attacks that we have right now and that we will continue to have into next year is Project 2025. The more I see about this, the yeah. more I hear about Project 2025. Um, the thing I'm excited about, Rachel, about Project 2025, I know that sounds weird, but they're not denouncing it. It almost feels like, and catch me if I'm wrong, they're going to embrace it and they're going to try to run <laughs> on this thing. They're already starting. Like Marjorie Taylor Greene, have you seen that she'll go to the House floor and she'll be like, well, I want to impeach P. Trish, this person, and I want to lower their salary to a dollar. And everyone's like, oh, well, that's really dumb. You can't do that. That's not how it works. But I don't think that's actually what she's doing. I actually think what she's doing is she's floating Project 2025 principles um, out into the ether, and they're doing it via the floor of the House of Representatives. Because really what she's saying when you want to lower someone's salary to a dollar is I don't want them to be in government because they don't agree with me um, is really what she's saying, essentially. And that's not the the underlying evil of Project 2025, but it's kind of the overt problem which project 2025 and we've talked about it on this show but project 2025 is so dense right it's so dense they made it very dense they made it to where maga is not even going to be able to read it probably in most cases and and i could never read project 2025 it's written by college educated think tank liber you know libertarian nerd republicans there's no fucking way maga could ever read that but gus go on well, I think that's intentional, Rachel. I think that was intentional. Yes. I think Heritage Foundation has developed this document so that Fox News can say, no, this is great because it's going to undermine the deep state. And that's what yes. your, your Uncle Bob, as you refer, I refer to him as the Farm Fresh Facebook Uncle Fred. Um, that's what they're that's what they're going to say is the deep state. But you got to have this ammunition to pivot and attack. And I think Project 2025, especially going in the next year, and what better time to practice this um, pivot and attack on Project 2025 
than Thanksgiving and Christmas when you're with your family. 